is unfortunately what we see is right there is just this kind of slow river of lava. Right now there is a literally a nationwide shortage of it. You're turning your holding tank into a septic system. Absolutely a no-no. Look who's back. <laughs> it's Jim with Clean Tank. Uh, Jim, you consistently, our video, the Black Tank Masterclass, uh, is consistently number one or number two on our channel. Yep. It has over 500 comments. You're back today, but specifically, we're going to talk about and address a bunch of questions. You guys had tons of questions on that video, and we're suggesting all kinds of, what about this product? What about this? What about that? And we're going to ask you specifically about those. Sure. Like, are they useful in some capacity, or toss them, or whatever but, um, and then in the end we should talk about your solution yep, absolutely. again because there was tons of questions about that as well yep. i'm tom and i'm sheree and we're enjoy the journey dot live <laughs>say that uh, literally four out of five of the phone calls I get every day I get about 40 to 50 different points of contact a day seven days a week and uh, a lot of it attributed to these videos but four out of five of the phone calls all start with the phrase I saw you on the YouTube videos so I have to thank you for uh, for helping us to promote our company and giving us the opportunity to educate some people awesome so, Jim, we've got a few of the products that I used to use uh, on the table right here. Um, care to share any opinions on those? So, we don't like to single out any of the products by name, certainly. But uh, as we said before, if you're using any of the commonly available uh, tank additives that break down or digest or even liquefy the contents in your holding tanks, especially the black, you're turning your holding tank into a septic system. Even though it sounds like a good idea that you want that stuff broken down so that it flows out easier, what's actually happening is you're turning that holding tank into a, a big plastic box full of oatmeal or peanut butter or whatever you want to think of that's kind of thick and sticky. Customers that use that uh those type of tank additives that break down or digest stuff, well, oh gee. that is unfortunately what we see is right there is just this kind of slow river of lava coming out. Oh my god. And uh, that's what's been sitting in the bottom of your tanks up against the sensors now for three years. Oh, so, that is gross. It is gross. <laughs> it is really gross. But, uh, Don't watch it. No. <laughs> Hide from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the smell vision has been uh, turned off. You don't want to smell it. Yeah, I, I have to say the smell is not great right now. <laughs> no. So we're not big fans of uh, the commercially available uh, additives, uh, but we don't like to single out any of them by name. People don't want to waste their money, right? That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's so many aftermarket RV products and yep. stuff like that. And, you know, just save your money. Get the stuff that works. Yep, absolutely. You certainly can use whatever you want, but we always stick by our uh, tank additive that we've been promoting now for 11 years. And what we'll do is actually we'll share that at the end of the video, what that uh, formula is. All right, Jim, first question. Multiple viewers asked about using bleach in their tanks. Okay. What do you think? So um, bleach is a wonderful disinfectant. And when you are sanitizing your freshwater tank, that freshwater holding tank, you can either use bleach or vinegar. Uh, both are uh, really great at uh, killing all bacteria viruses, things like that. Um, however, uh, if you're going to use vinegar, you want to double the concentration. Vinegar kills about 80% of those contaminants, whereas bleach kills about 99 point, a whole lot of nines after that. As far as bleach in your uh, black or gray tank to do some sort of disinfecting, absolutely no, no reason to do it. 
Um, if you disinfected with those tanks, the black or the gray, the next time you go to the bathroom or do a load of dishes or whatever, it's going to get contaminated again. So bleach in your black and gray tank, absolutely a no-no. And in general, bleach is a very caustic chemical. So we want to limit the amount of time that it's in any of our tanks so that it doesn't break down any of the rubber or soft plastic seals. Okay, and you actually started to answer or kind of answered that uh, one of our other questions was about vinegar. Yes. So vinegar, not helpful in your uh, tanks either? Vinegar is a good disinfectant, but not as good as bleach. But putting that in your black and gray tanks, there's no reason to do it. No reason at all. Okay. I have never found a tank treatment that controls the odor, which is all I'm concerned with. I instead, after dumping and rinsing, I put six gallons of water in along with a box of baking soda. The baking soda keeps the poop from sticking below the toilet. I also do not put TP in the tank. I can often go two to three weeks between dumping because it is mostly liquid with some solids. What say you, Jim? <laughs> Boy, that's a, that's a big one there. So, um, baking soda in there, if you want to put it in, it's fine. It's not really going to do too much unless you added uh, uh, a chemical like vinegar, believe it or not, that would interact with it and kind of cause a foaming action. I've heard people that do it. Uh, my big thing is just using a lot of water in there. Oh, look how clean it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> not not so, so much, huh? Not so clean. <laughs> yeah. So if you're flushing out, going through that correct process of uh, emptying your tanks when they are 75 to 100 percent full, uh, emptying them out and then doing a really good job with water and flushing them out. If you're still having tank odors, there's still stuff in there. And if you're using one of those uh, traditional commercially available tank additives and that's what you've been doing your whole RVing life, I guarantee you if we were to open up that tank uh, even though you're flushing and getting out uh, clean water, we're going to still see a buildup of uh, uh, you know, feces and poop and things like that that are still in there that are still causing those odor problems. Okay, here's another long one for you, Jim. Okay. Once or twice a season, I do the following. Starting with emptying tanks, I add one to two cups of borax, then fill with water to about half full, dissolving the borax in a bucket of water first. I wait a day or two, then I do three to four forward reverse hard stops. I guess driving the RV to slosh things around uh, and then dump the tanks. Waiting accomplishes two things. It gives time for the borax to work, but also gives time for the water to warm up. Warm water is better for the cleaning process. Maybe I will start adding some Calgon and Pine Salt after seeing this. Of course, I always do a 100% fill and dump with water after every trip. It's quite a process on that one, huh, Jim? It is. That's a lot going on there. Uh, and, and fundamentally, the idea is correct. I would be very careful with borax. Uh, borax, as a chemical, uh, is extremely um, uh, caustic uh, because it's, it's pretty f uh, high on the pH scale. Uh, so it's a very basic chemical as opposed to something like a Calgon, which is only very slightly acidic. So being very caustic, uh, you have to be careful that it's not going to eat away those uh, gates, uh, the seals and things like that. So if you're putting a lot of borax in there and you're letting that sit for a few days, the lifespan of your seals and your gate valves is probably pretty drastically reduced. So if my opinion is switch from the borax to the Calgon, uh, but otherwise, uh, using warm water or even hot water in there is a great way to help uh, uh, kind of clean things out. In fact, if you had a clog in your toilet, one of the first things we uh, recommend, if we can't get there right away to help you, is to put uh, as much hot water down your toilet to help kind of break up a clog uh, and make things move along. Great advice again, Jim. And if you have not seen the Black Tank Masterclass or water heater videos, we will link those down below. You tell us, uh, Jim, about your service, uh, what you offer, and then share your solution sure. uh, that you do recommend if, you, if somebody wants to use an additive. Absolutely. So our uh, company, Clean Tank, has grown over the last year. I think the last time we saw you, Tom, uh, we were maybe around a dozen dealers. Right now, I think we're at 48 throughout the United States and Canada, so we're an international company now. And uh, we offer hydrojet uh, 
uh, tank jetting. Uh, so we're going in and uh, jetting out your holding tanks, your black and your gray, uh, using our uh, exclusive hydrojetter at 1500 PSI, or roughly 10 to 15 times the pressure that the typical RV uh, tank spray system uh, uses. We're able to clean those tanks literally as clean as they came from the factory. So if we were to slice them open, there is nothing in there by the time we're done. Uh, we do recommend that uh, primarily you use a lot of water when you are using your RV. Everybody knows that, water, water, water. Uh, if you want to use a tank uh, additive of some side, uh, type, we uh, suggest that you uh, try to make a smart decision. Um, at Clean Tank for 11 years now, we've been offering or giving away our uh, tank solution that we have here. This is simply a mixture of Calgon, Pine Sol, and water. The Calgon breaks the surface tension of water, literally makes watery slippery, so things don't stick inside the tank. The Pine Sol is an excellent cleaner when also this tank, this solution is used in the gray tanks that uh, gets rid of odors, does the same thing in the black tanks. Add a little bit of water in there just to make it uh, uh, a little more liquidy to get into the tanks. A lot of people have been having a hard time getting a hold of the Calgon. Uh, we traditionally like the bath pearls, but you can use bath beads or bath liquid. I will tell you that starting in October, we are going to be an exclusive distributor of the Calgon bath pearls. So we'll have those available uh, for uh, purchase. And then uh, if uh, you are interested in our tank solution, literally on every uh, single piece of marketing we have, and I'm sure Tom is going to uh, link to it as well, uh, is our recipe. We don't sell the tank solution. We give it away when we do a service. We encourage everybody to make it on your own. You can make a gallon of it for about five bucks. Um, but uh, every piece of marketing we have, this is the back of my business card, has that tank solution recipe, and I'm sure Tom's going to link to it in the comments. So, Jim, uh, what if people have concern about the pine oil and the pine salt? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, pine salt uh, actually stopped using pine oil and pine salt in 1982. And the concern is that pine oil is a pretty caustic chemical. They actually did start adding it back into the original pine scent, uh, pine salt, but it's at such a low concentration, it's more of a fragrance than anything else. Uh, but if you do have a concern about it, then you can use any of the other scented pine saws that don't have any pine oil at all. So Jim, we've had several comments from viewers that it's hard to find the Calgon bath beads. Is there any other product they can use? Yeah, so that's a good question. Right now there's a literally a nationwide shortage of it. Uh, there's some places on uh, Amazon where it's extremely expensive, but here it is. You want to use a Calgon product from the bath department. We recommend Calgon bath pearls. Those are the hard ones to get. Bath beads are readily available. It's more of a powder. You can certainly use that. Or the bath liquid is easily available as well right now. So any Calgon bath product that's not Calgon water softener, it's not Calgon that you use in your uh, dishwasher, it is not Calgon that you use in the clothes washer. Calgon from the bath department is what you want. So modern quote attributor asked, nice informative video. I would also be interested to see recommendations about keeping your freshwater tanks fresh. Absolutely. So sanitizing your freshwater tanks is exactly what you want to be doing. Even if you're not a heavy user of your freshwater tanks, for full timers, you want to be uh, sanitizing those four times a year, usually in the seasons. For everybody else, even if you go out once or you go out 30 times, as long as you're not a, a full-timer, you want to be doing that twice a year. So make sure that you're sanitizing those to keep them nice and fresh. And great question because actually that's one of the videos we're recording today. Absolutely. So uh, that will be a separate video that's either already out. We'll link to that below if it is or it will be coming out. So make sure you subscribe so you catch that video when it comes out. Well, Jim, um, thank you so much for coming out here again and answering these questions. And we will link to our other videos with Clean Tank. Uh, and uh, watch for our other videos coming out where I'm going to get a re-cleaning. What grade am I going to get <laughs> after a year of using regular toilet paper? 
in our RV. So watch for that video. I guess it's important to say that uh, you know you are still adding dealers. Yes. If people are interested in that. Absolutely. All of your contact information will be down below in the description and the pinned comment. Yep. Uh, so they can reach out to you with questions. Absolutely. Um, and keep the questions coming because yep. I'm sure we'll run into you again and we'll get more of these questions answered. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we've recorded even more videos with Jim yep. about this topic. So actually we'll put one of those videos up right over here right now.